This match was quite disappointing. Throughout the entire match, I was expecting Commander to land some attacks that never happened. The match was overly drawn out. Furthermore, Wardlow appears entirely disconnected from the Undisputed Kingdom, making him an ill fit for the group. To that, I say, maybe that is the whole point. Have you ever considered that that is the plan the whole time? I mean, I think it's been telegraphed. Even in the very first promo on the first Dynamite, it was said by Adam Cole, like, hey, we got Wardlow and he's going to beat the champ and then he's going to drop the belt to me. My favorite part was the look from Wardlow at Adam Cole, like, hey, no fucking way I'm giving you this belt, little man. And that's kind of the story, guys. If you missed that, I'm sorry, but I'm here to tell you now, that is going to be the story. Wardlow is going to split from this group. Now, if your critique is that that is played out, then you're more accurate, right? Because it is. Um, you got the big guy in the stable. He's treated like shit by everybody. And then he has to turn on them. Boom, baby face. I don't think this was anywhere near as good as the match between Wardlow and Trent. I think that was a much better version of this match. I feel like this was the lesser version of this kind of match. I felt like it was way too much of a squash on Commander. Not that Commander is higher up on, should be higher up on the card than Trent. Just that... I think that either Wardlow needs to have a longer match that where both sides get to look good, or we need to have a straight up squash match, which I don't think you should do on Commander. And that's the, where this lean towards. If Commander is ever going to be a guy in AEW that is taken seriously at all, you can't have him being destroyed by Wardlow. Like, I don't even know why you put Commander in the ring with Wardlow to get destroyed like this. The Commander just ends up looking like a jobber here, straight up. And that's what I don't like about this one. An entertaining sprint that was far better than last week's match against Trent. Faster and more entertaining. I just hope Wardlow's knee is okay. This match might have gone a little longer than needed. But I like the setups for Wardlow's big offense. Whenever he caught Commander, his throws and slams were huge looking. The F-10 in particular looked awesome. Credit to Commander for fully taking the bump. Commander's rope walks leading to the spinning power slam looked fluid and impressive as well. Hopefully Wardlow's knee just buckled, hyperextended on the finish, and he doesn't need to miss any time. Positive reviews seem to think that no one should be able to stand up to Wardlow. Wardlow fans think that nobody should be able to stand up to Wardlow. Wardlow should squash every wrestler on the roster. No one should get their shit in when they go up against Wardlow. And I don't know if we want to go that far. Do we really need to protect this guy as much as Goldberg? Like, Wardlow, I don't feel in this day and age needs to be set up and protected as much as we did Goldberg back in the day. As cool as I thought that shit was when I was a kid, I just think maybe we're a little bit past it. Maybe it's a little better if we don't bury half the fucking roster to make one guy look good. I don't think that... I think the match between Wardlow and Trent... You should definitely go watch that video after you watch this one. But uh, if you want to see my thoughts on the Wardlow-Trent match... And some highlights from it, too. Because, like, re go remember it. Go remember Wardlow versus Trent. Compare it to Wardlow versus Commander. And fucking tell me that that wasn't just a better match all around for both guys. Wardlow didn't look weak. Wardlow didn't look, you know, like he couldn't just end the match at any time. Plus, you guys, on the commentary, they're making sure to call it out. Wardlow's playing with this food. Oh, guys, and I gotta fucking mention, I absolutely fucking adore the spot where Wardlow flexes into the Tritonton, that might be one of the best spots I have seen in modern wrestling. The fact they gave that to Wardlow, they couldn't let anybody have that gimmick, right? I don't know if I've ever seen that. I mean, let me know down in the comments if I'm missing something from some other wrestling organization or history. There very well could be another wrestler that did that. But that flexing, look at himself, just check himself out, and the promo that he cut, about this as well, where he's like, when I look at myself, I see the number one guy in AEW. Like, that whole angle, that narcissism, 
is fucking awesome. Like, it's a really cool wrinkle to his character. It actually is a characteristic, which is maybe the first one that Warlow's shown really since he's been in AEW that is interesting and that we haven't really seen in a minute. So I think it's really, really cool. It's a really cool spot. I'm glad that, that I, this might be the first match where he did it, or at least the first match where they got the camera angle just right. Like they really captured it well, like him checking himself out in the big screen. Amazing for that. Um, so, all right, I got to give this thing a rating, I guess, because uh, that's what YouTube uh, wrestling reviewers do. I'll give it a fucking two. Like, I, I give it a fucking two. Because Wardlow was like knee buckled and shit, and the match wasn't very long, and, and Commander looked like crap. Um, Wardlow, I don't even know if Wardlow looked like as strong as he could have looked in this. Uh, everything could have come off better, and it's no one's fault in particular, but just whatever this was, it seemed to be more about what happened after the match instead of about the actual match itself. There was a lot of business with Adam Cole and friends around this match. Adam Cole was on commentary. There was just a lot of distractions. It wasn't really set up to be a very good match. So it wasn't a very good match. Five stars for a 53 year old man who can jump, kick, flip, like any young wrestler in the roster. We all know how Swerve is the rising star, but come on, Mr. RVD can do everything you can expect for a main event. And that's what it kind of comes down to. Uh, respect. AEW has respect for wrestling legends. They don't have them come in and get squashed. They let them come in and look amazing. And that's why you're going to see more and more wrestling legends show up in AEW because they are treated well. I don't know why Rob Van Dam has 90% of the offense in the first half, but okay, I guess. RVD is in great physical shape, but his ring work has clearly slowed down a good chunk since his heyday. The interference spot felt a bit predictable, but I think just letting Swerve win in a 1v1 would be better. Some decent spots scattered throughout, but RVD got it way too much offense in on Swerve. I guess you could justify it by saying Swerve was blindsided by the hardcore stipulation, but he's been shown as a cruel fighter before in his matches against Hangman, so why not continue that here and have him brutalize RVD? <laughs> Oh, I love this take. Why doesn't RVD just get the shit kicked out of him by Swerve on TV? Why doesn't Swerve just cripple an old man? I mean, we literally seen him do that with Dustin. So you got that. For me, it's just kind of tragic. Like, do we? how much do we need of Swerve being vicious on old men in AEW wrestling rings? I don't think you want to overdo that spot especially when we are on the cusp, the fucking cusp of the biggest face turn in all of wrestling. Swerve's turn from heel to face is going to be bigger than that of MJF. MJF, scumbag, absolutely. Swerve, straight up criminal, damn near a murderer, broke in and brutalized Nick Wayne within an inch of his life broke into Hangman's house and threatened his little baby. Like, come on, guys. This is going to be a huge heel to face turn. And you want to throw in brutalizing old Rob Van Dam on TV, especially when Rob Van Dam is still capable of amazing hardcore wrestling. Like, this match was so good. It was so good to see Rob Van Dam pull out all the ECW stops, throwing chairs, going off the top rope and doing leg drops, uh, that spot that he does from the inside to the outside, the, like the spinning leg drop. I mean, he's got all of his hits in here. He looks absolutely phenomenal. Why the fuck would you not want to put that on TV at least one more time before this guy retires? As far as we know, this is going to be the last, best Rob Van Dam match that anyone is ever going to see. Why the fuck would you want to not see that? Why instead would you want to see Swerve just destroy Rob Van Dam? Did you want Swerve to fucking retire Rob Van Dam in the ring? Would that make you bloodthirsty pricks happy if Swerve absolutely retired Rob Van Dam in the ring and he took his goddamn boots off and, and then Swerve, uh, you know, 
uh, shoved his boots up his ass. Like, what are you looking for here, guys? Were you looking to have a good time or did you want some kind of tragedy to play out in front of you? I, for one, wanted to have a good time and I thought this match was easily, 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 easily a four. And I could even go to a five on this, but I'm going to kind of draw that back a little bit. I mean, we've seen Rob Van Dam in better matches. We've seen Swerve in better matches. But this was a really good combination. One of the better Swerve matches that we've had out of this whole run. Um, and I like the underdog story. I don't think it's underused to have Swerve kind of be blindsided by it. It was a mystery opponent. It was a mystery stipulation. He wasn't able to prepare. He got his ass kicked and he made a comeback. Like, I like that it showed the guts of Swerve. And like I said, that face turn is coming. This is one of the building blocks in it. And, and, and you're putting that building block in place with him winning over a Stone Cold legend. I don't think you wanted him to brutalize a Stone Cold legend. You already had that with Dustin, right? And it was violent and it was horrible to watch. And it was, it was honestly quite uncomfortable. But um, I, I don't think we want to keep doing that with Swerve with the audience the way they are on him. Because literally they will cheer him. Like there is really nothing Swerve can do at this point to get booed, especially in certain regions. Like when he was here in New Jersey, dude, the, the whose house Swerve's house chants were non fucking stop. There was nothing he could do. Swerve could literally like, yeah, he could literally break into someone's house. He could break into a training facility and beat the crap out of a kid. Uh, within an inch of his life. All that stuff is forgiven. Nobody gives a shit because Prince Nana's dance is fucking awesome. And Swerve is one of the best wrestlers that we got. So yeah, we don't give a shit what he does. And so we really don't need to abuse that by having him just lay Rob Van Dam out like a fucking dog at this point. I don't think that was necessary. I think maybe the last time we're going to see that was with Dustin. And we were at a different point there. We weren't quite as hot, man. Swerve just keeps getting hotter every week, week by week. Swerve just picks up more and more steam until this guy's going to be the fucking champion. You mark my words. But okay, that's what I thought. I want to know what you think. Make sure you let me know down in the comments below. And Grave Diggers, keep digging. Stop what you're doing, baby. And follow Mr. Hargrave from Parts Unknown, if you will, baby. I've seen the demon's face. Mark, you one half of party party. Say what up to the Grave Diggers and... Watch another video or the test.